This is Arnie, um, and he is my daughter's dog, or one of her dogs. She's got two pugs, and he's chilling out after having a bit of a session with the PlayStation. Uh, I took this photo when I was babysitting, because I'm a granddad now, and you've got responsibilities as a granddad. You have to babysit and stuff like that. And I was looking after Killy, and Arnie was chilling out, and I thought, you know what, that would make quite a nice painting. So grab this snap and I thought I would do it in Procreate and because I'm into the grunge brush I thought I'd give it a go and see if I could do the old painting with just the grunge brush. I couldn't do it I have to admit I had to incorporate the um, turpentine brush I couldn't think of it then for a minute. So I used two brushes for this the grunge brush and the turpentine brush in procreate both are default brushes so you could have a go at something like this and i suppose the um, object of the exercise was to see if i could create fur or um, simulate fur with with those two brushes so let's get into it <laughs> Here we are in Procreate and I'm straight in with that grunge brush and I'm going to get a colour um, over the whole of the canvas. I want to keep it fairly light and my plan is to have this sort of um, canvas split into three along the thirds. So we've got a light third across the top, light third at the bottom and then this really dark band of Arnie the Pug in the middle. So, so uh, something I've never done before, I've only ever used the grunge brush to um, just to put in backgrounds and get a texture on that. But I thought, let's give it a go. Let's see if I can actually paint with it and uh, see what we come up with. So you can see here I'm using the, I think it's the grunge, grunge brush. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, it is. It's the grunge brush. And I'm using that to paint and um it wasn't too easy i have to say um it's what i expected really and i got quite a, a way into this just using the grunge brush and nothing else but i couldn't quite pull the whole thing off i needed something that helped me uh put some more sharper defined lines in which we'll get into a bit later on you notice this one i've reverted back to my uh, more traditional way of painting digitally where i get a um ground on uh, so I've, I've got the background painted on one um layer and i've created a new layer and i painted in the sort of rough shape of the body and then i'm just painting in so there's no drawing with this i'm just straight in painting and and going with the flow and seeing um what i come up with really so i set the grunge brush to to use as the eraser and the blender and obviously the the paintbrush to start with and i'm getting some nice soft effects but it was it was a bit later on when i wanted some more sharper detail that i, I was struggling so you can see uh, i toyed with the idea of making this a black and white uh, i did a crop there just to uh, bring the canvas in a little bit so I did, yeah, I thought about doing it black and white, but it was just that blue, blue-green on the PlayStation light that really drew me to it, and, and I felt I needed to put that blue in. So then I used that blue uh, in the shadows as well. And it's also the same blue that I've used as a much uh, less lighter tone in the background. So uh, that's why I didn't do it black and white. I wanted, I just wanted that little bit of blue in there, really. So I, I actually um, go in painting this PlayStation controller before I um, get into painting Arnie. And last week, uh, in a video I did, I think it was last week, maybe the week before, I can't remember which one, it would be a portrait one, where I was saying I do the faces first, and, um, you know, no matter what, because I worry that if I don't get a likeness, 
I'm wasting my time on the rest of the thing. But I thought, well, it's only a frigging dog, isn't it? Um, I, uh, I'm not <laughs> too worried. Nobody's going to worry too much, except perhaps Charlotte, whose dog it is, would be very upset if I didn't get a Linus. But for me, it wasn't an issue. So I actually went in painting the um, controller first. And, you know, I do like dogs, really. Uh, I, I'm, I didn't mean to be, you know, nasty about dogs or anything like that. I don't normally paint a lot of dogs, though. I'm more of a, I'm not a dog, you know. Look, some people just paint dog portraits, don't they, and do nothing else. Or cats. I don't know, that's not, I like to paint people or landscapes or sort of street scenes and things like that. I'm not really into doing the animals. Unless I can catch them in a moment like this. Uh, I think the last time I painted Arnie was I was painting um, Pumpkin Patch, where he was sat in a, a wheelbarrow with a couple of pumpkins, which I thought was really uh, cute. So, oh, God, I'm painting cute pictures. <sighs> Didn't mean that to happen. Anyway, I like it. I, li I like the composition of this. I love this so sort of idea of just... Uh, breaking my rules where I've just sort of got this um, painting split into three and I do think it really works I do sort of chop into the colour quite a lot I think it's this point where I'm starting to try and smudge away the edges oh no I'm working on the fur here and I do think it works quite well to get, get that kind of fur effect if you see what I'm doing just sort of um, stroking it really lightly and it does work quite well but I wanted to smudge the edges away and I couldn't do it with a grunge brush it was looking more like a watercolour and that's why I went for the uh, turpentine brush a little bit later on but you can see it, I think it works really well on the, for the fur and I do I try and put you might not see it too too well but I am varying the colour in the fur it's not just one color all over it you'll see a little bit of green going there and a bit of purple because he's a bit like a starling really where he's sort of depending on what the light is he looks different colors and i, I want you can see it on his his back there's like a sort of a, a teal color mixed in with the uh, purples and the darks he's definitely not black So I think it's it's kind of here. Yeah, I'm beginning to feel that it's difficult to uh, paint over with um, just that grunge brush. It sort of smudges the paint about a bit. And I created a couple of layers to work over the layers below it, but the colours were just sort of um, grinning through all the time, and it wasn't quite opaque enough. I think that was the problem with the grunge brush. I just couldn't get it opaque. Uh, as I wanted it so I'm sort of working from light to mid tones and then you know building it even darker now and I did I said earlier I didn't really care about it look, looking like him but I did I spent a lot a long time actually on the face uh, working trying to get it to, uh, to look get the folds in the fur really uh, and or his skin depending on uh, are you looking at it? But I wanted to sort of get out of the light, sort of catching the top of his head and the side of his cheek. And um, I wanted to get the sort of eye light on the bottom part of his uh, snout, I suppose, the bottom left. There's a highlight there that I wanted to capture. And obviously at the minute, his nose and uh, beard bit is just way too light. So that needs knocking back. So there's lots of blending going off. I think at that point his nose is just a little bit too small. So you can see I've got the sort of photograph of, of Arnie it's sort of zoomed in on his face and I'm working on uh, his face on the canvas which is pretty similar size and it makes it a lot easier to, to copy something like that, I feel. I'm sort of knocking back the highlights, 
they're just way too light. I'm sort of chis almost chiseling away and, and taking bits off and then adding bits back in again. At one point, I um, decided to use a couple of extra layers. I don't think I'm yet there yet, but if you watch close, you'll see I create a layer and set the blend mode to multiply to start putting some darker shadows in. And then I create another layer on top of that and I set the blend mode to add to put some highlights in. So here you can see I'm sort of I'm wanting to sort of soften those edges off so he blends in with the background. So he's almost got light um, bouncing off him. And I had to do that with a turpentine brush. It just wasn't working with the um, with the grunge brush at all. I wanted that kind of looseness around around the edge. Here, th I think this this is the point where I've now created a, a new layer that's um, in multiply mode, and that is so I can get the darks getting in there. So I'm still working on the uh, single layer. Well, I've I've got the ground layer, uh, obviously. Uh, and then this second layer. Well, actually, when I say second layer, I think I could, this is a third layer I'm working on. Well, I know it is, but the blend mode hasn't been changed. It, it's still just normal because on the head, I, I did create a third layer. Uh, but at this point, it's just sort of overpainting and covering up what's ever underneath. It's I'm not trying to... Um, create a blend so much but you can see in the odd place on the far right at the top of his head you can see where there is an actual overlay there so I'm sort of working on the snout and you see I've put those sort of greeny colors in there on the top of his head and around his snout just to add a little bit of variety and uh, I'm now sort of looking at the shadows around his nose and covering them up and working on the detail a little bit more, trying to uh, get rid of these sort of really bright areas that don't need to be bright at all, just to darken them up. And looking at those creases, there's sort of two creases to the left of his eye that uh, are quite important to his uh, character, I think. So... I needed to make sure I got those in okay. And you can see I'm using a, definitely using a turpentine brush now to um, try and get this effect of, of the fur. But it, it's sort of coarse of fur. It's sort of, you can almost see the airs on it or the whiskers on his chin. So these need to be slightly different to the fur on his back, which is much smoother. And I'm knocking back highlights all the time here. Trying to be a little bit more precise with the ear. Still adding colour. Uh, sort of trying to get some very, very subtle tonal changes in the top of his head. There's sort of hardly noticeable but I want them there I want you to be able to see that there is shape to his head and it's just not flat same with the side of his face I'm going in with some um, lighter greys mid-tone grains really and you'll notice also that on the sort of creases I've made it so that they're not the same color from the start to the finish they sort of vary slightly So just sort of really concentrating, looking at the photograph, looking at the, really studying the photograph hard to decide where I'm going to put these lines on his face. It doesn't look like it because obviously the painting speeded up so much. It doesn't look like I'm taking any time at all. So this is where I go in with the uh, layer that's uh, set to multiply and I sort of change the 
color completely from these purples and blues and greens to more of a brown uh, and sort of overpainting that and I think that really makes him start to pop just strengthening up the color a little bit to add that around his snout little bit on his on his uh, four legs and there you can see I'm adding uh, a little bit of light as well onto his uh, snout and here I well first of all I paint in the little bit of the controller I think it's the joystick which I'd missed off previously and then once I've got that painted in I'm going to create a new layer again and set the blend mode to add there we go oh actually I set it to screen not add and that means I can just put those highlights in and I know that they're going to pop on top of the um, other colors. And I'm pretty much using a white really to put where the uh, light really catches that controller. And I think that makes a world of difference. So I'm switching between the layers. Once you start using layers with add and um, multiply mode or whatever, you can only work with dark colors on the multiply and light colors on on the the screen and then at that point you you know, you've got to you know just keep changing between the layers so if you want if you're continually working with one or the other you have to change it all the time so i'm using the um screen mode now to add some highlights in just some really fine details of whiskers and stuff like that just to put this really fine detail in. So I'm getting close, really close to finishing at this point. I'm really liking how it looks. So sort of still not happy, overly happy with, with the top of the head. And I go in with some more uh, lighter tones not massively, you know, sort of just mid color, slightly darker than mid grays, I suppose. And then adding darks in again. So I'm back on the multiply layer. And the other thing is once you've painted on say the screen layer and that's on the top of the stack and it's got white in, and then you decide that you want to get rid of it. You've either got to erase that, uh, well, you have or create another layer above it to, to put darker colors on again so there we have it that is my portrait of arnie with his ps4 game controller uh painted in procreate with a grunge and turpentine brush i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have big thumbs up as always is much appreciated if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing because i have lots of videos like this and i would love to be sharing them with you so hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.